Welcome. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it's good to be with you in God's house this morning. We're glad that you're here. Um, and if I'm, I'm, I'm trying to breathe deep and get over the frazzle of things being out, we had like a whole, we must have been hit by some lightning or something. This whole bank of lights was out and the internet's still out. And anyway, um, ironically, today's service is about rest and peace, right? <laughs> we just, ah. Um, I have two announcements for you. One is written in the bulletin. Next Sunday, we are having a congregational meeting to elect elders and deacons. Uh, their names are there in your bulletin. Uh, and, and it'll just follow worship next week. Um, and then the other announcement, this Thursday at 6 p.m., we are doing uh, kind of a community outreach to some neighbors down the street at Brighton Place. And i uh, just going to have ice cream and music and, and meet some of the folks there. And uh, you are invited if you would like to come and just meet some of those neighbors. We'll be outside. Um, I think you'll see us uh, on the basketball court at 6 o'clock. And lis you know, listen for the music or smell for the ice cream. You'll find us uh, but down there. Uh, and if you can't come, please pray for that event. It's the first outreach like that we've done in a while. And we could certainly use God's blessing. Those are all of our announcements. As I uh, mentioned, our topic this morning is rest. We're looking at kind of key words and concepts in the Bible this summer. And today we're looking at Sabbath, uh, which comes from the word to, to rest or cease from work. Uh, so uh, I probably need this um, more than anybody. Uh, so we're going to just sink our, our feet and our hearts into this biblical idea of rest that God instituted from creation, from the very beginning. Uh, we're told that he created in six days and then rested on the seventh, and that became a pattern for us. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to, to get into this a little bit. Our call to worship this morning comes from that creation account in Genesis 2. So listen and prepare your hearts and minds for worship this morning. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed and all their hosts 
By the seventh day, God completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Come, let us worship the Lord. May the peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. <clears throat> Our first scripture reading this morning uh, comes from Exodus 20. And this will be the, the focal point for much of the sermon. This is uh, one of the Ten Commandments, the fourth commandment, uh, which has to do with the Sabbath. So listen, this is God's word. Exodus 20, 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male or your female servant or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, children are very special to us at Good Shepherd, so we set aside a time for them to hear God's word, especially to them. I'd like to invite the children of the church to come up with Miss Christie. Um, if y'all would like to come up, you can. Um, or any age uh, are welcome. But y'all come on up. Someone new.
you joining us today. Nice. So today we are going to talk about the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is one day a week that is meant to be special. And for us, the Sabbath is Sunday. So today is our Sabbath. And the Bible tells us to keep the Sabbath holy. So that means to keep the Sabbath set apart. So today should be set apart from the other days of the week. It should be different. It's meant to be a day that we spend time with God and with family. <laughs> and so it's a special day to spend time with God and with each other as a church, right? Um, and it's kind of like these skip days that I used to have as a kid. So when I was growing up, my mom would give me one day a year that instead of going to school, her and I would spend the day together. And we didn't just sleep in and just not go to school on that day. We would plan what we were gonna do that day. It was a special day. And sometimes we would go shopping. One time we went to Carowinds. And we'd plan ahead where we wanted to go out to eat. We might even pack snacks the day before. And I would have to make sure that I finished all my schoolwork that I was gonna miss. And my mom would have to make sure that all of her work was done so that the day was free for us to spend together. Well, Sundays are meant to be a special day that we spend with God. So we do things a little bit different on Sundays, right? We didn't get up and go to school or work today. We came here today, right? And we're gonna learn about God, and we sang, we're gonna pray, and, and then if you're not here, not today, because live stream isn't working, but most weeks you could come online and watch online. But how else can we make Sunday special or different than other days of the week? Hmm. Well, you might make Sunday special by not doing homework or chores on Sundays. And that might take some planning ahead, right? Making sure that you get it all done. I know that's something that I have to work on, and most of the adults probably do too. Um, but you might pray on Sundays. You might find something that you really enjoy doing and pray to God while you're doing it. Um, but what else? Maybe you go to a special event on Sunday night, or you spend time with your family, and you honor God together by loving on each other. That's sort of what we're doing here, right? Um, but whatever you do on Sunday, you want to make sure that you make God the center of it, right? Because this day is about Him and about spending time with Him, right? All right. So you all can go up back to your seats. Thank you. At this time, we're going to sing about a Sabbath, about finding Sabbath, about finding rest. Once again, with Psalm 62, uh, my soul finds rest in God alone. You can uh, sing along uh, with the words and music uh, that are in your bulletin. Let's sing together. My soul finds rest in God alone, my rock and my salvation, a fortress strong against my foes, and I will not be shaken. Though lips may bless and hearts may curse, and lies like arrows pierce me, I'll fix my heart on righteousness, I'll look to who hears me? We're to sing verse two. Find rest, my soul, in God alone, amid the world's temptations. When evil seeks to take a hold, I'll cling to my salvation. Though riches come and riches go, don't set your heart upon. Our harvested in heaven. Oh, praise Him, hallelujah, my delight and my reward. Everlasting, ever failing, my Redeemer, my God. I'll set my gaze on God alone. And 
trusting him completely with every day pour out my soul and he will prove his mercy though life is but a fleeting breath a sigh too brief to measure my king has crushed the curse of death and i am his forever second scripture reading is from Luke 14 verses 1 through 6. Listen, this is God's word. It happened that when Jesus went into the house of one of the leaders of the Pharisees on the Sabbath to eat bread, they were watching him closely. And there in front of him was a man suffering from dropsy. And Jesus answered and spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. And he took hold of the man and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you will have a son or an ox fall into a well and will not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day? And they could make no reply to this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for uh, the Sabbath Uh, a gift that you have given us for our own uh, good and well-being. Would you help us to understand uh, the words that we read and hear, and would you cause my words to line up with yours? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Sabbath is uh, the word for today. Those those are all the various words we're looking at this summer. Um, It is uh, a noun that happened, uh, is used some hundred times or more in the Bible in both Testaments. It's one of those words, it's a Hebrew word, but it was carried over. It's not translated. When you get to the New Testament in Greek, it's still Sabbath, and the the Jews in Jesus' day, and Jesus himself, still observed the Sabbath. And then even in English, we don't translate it into English. It's still Sabbath. Uh, It is that... uh, that day that God gave us to set aside. It comes, however, from a Hebrew verb that means to rest or to cease activity, whatever you were doing, to stop that uh, and to do something else and to to pause and to rest. Today, I want to look with you at really two things, uh, which are our two scripture readings. The first is to kind of walk through the fourth commandment about honoring the Sabbath day. Um, It's one of the few commandments that has some reasons given, so we want to look at those. And then I want to look with you at what Jesus had to say, both in the the passage we just read and then a few other places, because he uh, he practiced the Sabbath but uh, did some things a little bit differently than the religious leaders of his day, and he was challenged on that. So we want to look at what he had to say, Uh, and then I have an invitation for you at the end, a challenge. So we're going to start in Exodus 20 with the fourth commandment. Um, In short form, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Um, And and it's, I mean, it's the whole reading you heard. Uh, I want to go through the the phrases that you see on the screen up there, what five phrases, and and just say a bit about each one. In verse eight, uh, remember and keep the Sabbath holy. Uh, Both the words remember and the word keep Um, imply a habit, right? And it's a habit, like any habit, we have to cultivate. Um, It is perhaps a holy habit, but it's not one that just comes automatically. You you have to um, rehearse it, uh, do it over and over. I mean, like any New Year's resolution for exercise or eating or or whatever else it might be, for it to become part of our life, um, we have to 
cultivate that kind of holy habit, like relationships. I mean, none of, none of that comes automatically. Uh, it's something we have to build into our life. And so the commandment's not just do Sabbath, it's remember it, keep it, keep it holy. Um, verse 9 says, uh, this is part of that rationale, six days you'll labor, and then the seventh day rest. I don't know that we ever think about this, but the, the fact that the reference to the rest of the days is built into it, this commandment really orders our whole week, right? It's telling us work for six days, rest for one. And that's a, a, a pattern like breathing uh, that God has designed for us to build into our week. Kind of like tithing, where you set aside the, the first tenth of, of income, uh, many of these commands, in order to keep them well, uh, you don't just wake up Sunday morning and say, oh, it's the Sabbath. You have to plan ahead, like Christy said in her, her message. It orders the whole of life, right? To give a tenth off the top, you have to think through your income and your expenses and, and your priorities. To effectively observe the Sabbath, you have to think through your week. Have I done the work I need to get done so that I can rest on this day, right? Do I go to bed at a reasonable hour so that uh, I don't embarrass myself and fall out of my chair snoring at church, right? <laughs> so you prepare. Uh, it, the, the commandment speaks to the whole week. Verse 10 talks about it, it's not addressed to individuals uh, alone. It's addressed to the whole household. In fact, even beyond the family to the animals. Everybody is a part of this. You know, it, it, that doesn't correspond real easily into 2021, but I think it, it points to the fact that, that Sabbath is something we do in community together. We do it with the, the family of faith. We do it with our own uh, families as they may be gathered. Um, you may live alone, but you still have this family of faith. So it's not just this hour on Sunday morning. It's, it's the day to come together. I, we, for years, uh, you know, groups out of the church have said, let's all uh, go have lunch together, or let's, let's walk this afternoon, or spend time together. And that's part of the invitation to us to enjoy the Sabbath, is to do that together uh, as family. Now, verse 11 uh, is the uh, roots of this command in creation itself. Uh, it was God's design from the very beginning, and God modeled what we are to do. God was not tired after six days. Uh, God rested to show us um, what it looks like to work and then to rest and to have that, that cycle in our life. So, so the commandment says the Lord created and then rested. Uh, and that's the, the pattern we're to follow. And then finally in verse 11, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. I know blessing is a word that's a little bit hard to pin down what that means. Um, but it is, um, I always like to talk about it uh, with an illustration like a, a, a river Right? If the river is God's blessing, God's best, God's um, design for humanity, for us, blessing is you know, going out in your, your canoe or your boat into the middle of that stream of God's goodness and going in the direction God has set out. That is, you, you are blessed when you're in God's will. If you're rowing against God's teaching or commandment or will, that's not blessing, that's fighting. <laughs> God. And if you're out of the river altogether, you're also missing out on the blessing. So, so God's blessed the Sabbath day, which is the invitation part, right? Come be a part of this and know the goodness that God has designed for us to experience. Well, that's going to point us towards Jesus and the Sabbath. We had a passage from Luke uh, 14. Yeah, you can go on to the next one. Um, Jesus honored the Sabbath with his disciples. Often we'll read about him being in the temple or being in the synagogue. But he also, there's several accounts of him um, healing people or teaching or doing something on the Sabbath day and the religious leaders really coming after him for that. And part of what you need to know about that was by Jesus' day, the Sabbath had been turned into just the most... Um, scrutinized and picky and particular form of, of legalism, of law keeping, right? I mean, it was down to the, um, you know, and I don't know the details of this, you know, if you had to eat, you could maybe have um, a half a bite of grain and half a sip of water, but if you did three-fourths of a sip of water, you were breaking the law, 
uh, the religious law. I mean, it, it was just every little thing was, uh, what, religiously speaking, was, was mapped out. And it was an over um, literal kind of uh, letter of the law reading. Yeah, there, there's a passage where the, the Pharisees talked about tithing your, uh, your herbs, right? Your mint, your dill, and cumin. I mean, that, that's what they were doing with the law. And Jesus comes into that context with scribes and Pharisees, and he runs into them in the passage we read today, and he heals a man. And he anticipates, you know, it's like they're going to come after him. You're, you're working on the Sabbath. You healed a man, right? And, and he says to them, and this is from the law of Moses, uh, the, the law provides for if, if your animal or your child falls into a ditch on the Sabbath, get them out. You don't let them uh, fall to further harm or die just not to work, right? The Sabbath, part of its design is for the goodness and the wellness of humanity and, and, and the earth. So you, you get them out. And he said, I've healed a man. Would, would any of you not have pulled your own child out of a well? And they're all silent. They don't have anything to say. So, so Jesus makes the case, there's always time for mercy on the Sabbath. That's part of the, the design for it. Another time, here's a couple of quotes when he's talking about the Sabbath. His disciples were, were hungry, and they were walking out of town, and they picked some grains from a grain field and got into trouble for that with the scribes and Pharisees. Um, and Jesus quoted from the prophets and said, God said of your worship, I desire compassion and mercy, not sacrifice. God was interested in the heart, the spirit of the law, not the literal uh, only the, the keeping of the letter of the law. And then finally, in that same passage, uh, Jesus says the Sabbath is made for man, made for humanity, uh, not humanity, made for the Sabbath. And he says the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And what I take away from that is really like any of God's laws, they're not for salvation. We've talked about that before. All those those laws in the Old Testament were, were not keep these and you'll be saved. It was keep them and you will experience God's blessing because they are for your good. Kind of like seat belts, right? Put them on. It's for your own good. You may not like them, uh, but they help protect you. So God's laws do the same thing, including the Sabbath law, including the tithing, um, honoring your parents, all that. It's for your good. So when G Jesus reminds us, they're not just there to make God happy, it, it's not the, the Sabbath isn't there for God's sake. The Sabbath is God has given it for your sake so that you might thrive. And if you think about it, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Working 24-7, never taking a break, never taking time away, never resting from that is not healthy. It's not helpful. It's not good for you, right? So if God builds into creation itself, your, uh, your creation is human beings and then his, his teaching, his commandment, you know, hey, rest every seventh day, right? Obviously, that's good for us. But how many of us uh, do the 24-7 thing anyway? Uh, the point is not, you know, work, work right through a weekend and, and God's going to consign you to hell. That's not even close to why the commandments are given. God would just say, you're, you're missing out on the blessing. You're, you're rowing against the current of what, of, of the good gifts that I've given you. So Jesus says, the Sabbath is made for you, for your sake, for blessing. So what sorts of things does that mean? Um, it's rest, renewal, spiritual growth, gathering in uh, the community of faith together, together. It's living out our faith together, acts of mercy and compassion, acts of neighborliness. I mean, the thing we're doing Thursday would have been a great Sabbath afternoon event as well to go meet and love on uh, our neighbors. And you may say, well, is there anything wrong with doing that on Thursday? Worship? No. Worship any day. God's saying just at least, at least build into your life this one in seven pattern. I mean, some folks uh, have, a, have a sick, you know, a, a shifting work schedule. I mean, I work on Sundays, so I, I seek my Sabbath another day of the week, right? The, the point is uh, one in seven. And just like tithing, where God asks for us to prioritize a tenth of our income, but we are free to give offerings over and above that, 
Sure, worship throughout the week. Serve throughout the week. I mean, that's part of following Jesus. But he's saying at a minimum, don't miss this opportunity to, to rest, to renew, to connect, to serve. Uh, that's what the Sabbath is for. And then just a little uh, bonus. It's not on the screen. Um, but from Hebrews 4.9, uh, it, it, in Hebrews, it's, the whole book is kind of pulling uh, teaching and, and events from the Old Testament and explaining them in the light of Jesus. Uh, and, and Hebrews 4 says this, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. And it's, what it's doing is looking ahead to eternity with God, saying God has so... I mean, this is so valuable to rest in God's presence, to experience that. It's, it's, a, it's a model for um, what comes after this life, to be in God's presence. We're not going to be uh, napping in heaven. We're going to be resting finally, fully, at last, in the presence of God. So this weekly pattern um, is, is kind of a practice and a, and a taste of what it's going to be like to be uh, with God. Well, I want to end with a... A bit of a challenge. I mean, the, clearly the Sabbath is important. Um, I just this morning I, I added this in here because I was I was thinking of of this. We did a number of years ago. Um, I feel the pull with whether it's the Sabbath or any number of other things the Bible teaches. It's so easy for me to get drawn into either the legalism, keeping the letter of the law. You know, if I, just, if, I go, if I go to church every Sunday, I'm keeping that commandment and God's happy with me. But that's not why it was put there. Or kind of going the other way, um, oh, the Sabbath was made for me? It means I can do anything. That's the day to like party it up, right? God made it for me. And in a sense, that's right. But God also said, keep it holy, set it aside, make it distinct to be with me, right? Um, so somewhere in the middle of those two extremes is where we're supposed to live. And I remember this slide, which actually, I think, prompted the creation of our grace and truth banners. But somewhere between those extremes is where we live with God, right? In, with grace and with truth. And we mess up. We have freedom to fail, but we also have the freedom to live in that, um, that stream of God's blessing. Right? So... I thought of this because the, the two things I wanted to say to you uh, were, I know the Sabbath is important, and I know what it's like to ignore it. And ironically, uh, the COVID year uh, was uh, the worst I've ever done in my life at that. Uh, probably because we had to figure out all the, the videos and the live streaming, but I just worked around the clock. And um, I knew as it was going down, this is not healthy, this is not good for me, it's not... I don't know where the Sabbath falls in this. Uh, but the second thing I knew was I've experienced a good, holy habit of regular Sabbath before in my life. And I know the, the goodness, the blessing that brings to me. So I knew it was not, not a place I wanted to stay. Um, so I, I imagine all of you uh, have experienced a little bit of both of those things. We don't do it perfectly, but we maybe recognize there is something good in here that God has for me. So I want to, I want to end with a, a holy invitation. Um, it's this, that this particular command, like all the rest of them, I don't know what, is, what it is in us, maybe it's our culture, our upbringing, we're wired to hear rules, commandments as, you know, just almost like shackles. They're a burden on us. They they rob us of joy, but that's, that's the opposite of what God intended uh, for these commandments. The, the Sabbath command is a gift to you and me, right? It is for our joy, for our good, for our blessing. So rather than, you know, wag my finger and say, uh, do this, it's one of the Ten Commandments, those are the big ones, you got to do this, shame on you if you don't, shame on me, I haven't. God says, I invite you, I invite you to this holy habit, this pattern of, of setting aside uh, a regular time in life to rest, to renew, to be in my presence, to be refreshed, to connect to the family, the community of faith, to connect to your own families, to set aside a, a whole 24-hour period uh, for me 
which is not just, you know, devotions uh, in my Bible 24 hours straight. It's, it's the, the space to, to, to be with God and all that God designs for us from worship to mercy and serving to fellowship and community, um, the, the, the blessedness of, of, you know, I'm, I am uh, canoeing down the, the heart of, of God's design for me. So I hope you hear it as a, a good and holy invitation and something to build into your life. I'll also say this. Um, this often happens five minutes before the service. I got to visit this last week with a couple of different folks, all of whom were past retirement age. And I had all the sermon in my head, and I, and I thought, well, gosh, I'm talking about working the other six days, and what does it look like to take a day of rest? And um, maybe they figured this out in Sunday school today. I was like, what does Sabbath look like um, if you are retired or you're in you know, um, assisted living, a nursing home? What does it look like as you advance in, er in years? Um, and I, I, in the five minutes before the service started, didn't come up with a great answer to that. But I raised that as an important question for all of you. And some of you that are uh, closer to that or living there, uh, that's a great, I would love to discuss that. What does it look like still? Because I believe it's still a holy invitation to set aside one day in seven for God, for that um, being in God's presence and enjoying the people of God and showing mercy and compassion, all those things we just listed. Um, that's, a, that's a great follow-up to pursue that. Um, or if you're a, you know, a kid on summer break from school, what does it look like? Can't answer all those questions in one sermon, uh, but I do know this, it's God's gift to us, and I wish it for you and for me. Amen. So this is a little different. Um, We normally have a prayer of confession and assurance of pardon and maybe some other elements, but I ran across this responsive uh, reading, um, actually from our, our choir did Rudder's Requiem with Sharon Presbyterian many, many years ago, and I think I wrote this affirmation of faith for that event. But it's a good digging, the point of it was to dig into what does God's rest for us, God's Sabbath for us mean um, so I'm going to invite you to respond. There's a f one place where we have a men and women's part, um, but I'll read and then uh, ask you to respond to this. God has woven rest into the fabric of our life in the history of redemption and salvation. From creation to completion, God's rest is our hope, our promise, and a gracious gift. In creation, God established rest as our example and pattern for life. By the seventh day... God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Throughout the history of God's people, God has offered rest and sanctuary in the midst of a hostile and difficult world. In so many ways, the promise of salvation is the promise of rest for our souls, who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them, who led them through the depths. I will feed my flock, and I will lead them to rest, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered, bind up the broken, and strengthen the sick. Jesus was and is God's promised rest, enfleshed for the world to see. His gracious invitation to rest is for all who will come and believe. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Like ancient Israel, the church continues to see God's rest demonstrated in our midst. In our worship, we also celebrate this rest as we enter the sanctuary of God's holy presence. 
there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered God's rest has himself also rested from his works, as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest. Jesus Christ came to save all who believe and to secure our eternal rest in the presence of God in heaven. For those who believe, rest means being with God and it means coming home. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, so that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow with them. To God be all the glory. Amen. His love is my resting place is the song uh, I'm going to sing for you. Um, it's not intended to be a congregational song. I want to invite you to take uh, the time to either follow along with the words on the screen or uh, close your eyes and meditate on the words we've heard uh, in the message today and in scripture. Um, I ran across this song in planning for this service and uh, really fell in love with it. It's a a song version of Psalm 23. His love is my resting place. And I put this picture up here because um, I think in my mind, I always think of Psalm 23 as this place with green pastures and lush. But this is Israel, and this is a picture of Israel. Um, and it's desert for the most part. But you see where the green is? Where the water flows. Um, and that's the green. Um, that's the life um, that we find in God when we rest in him. So I'm going to sing this for you right now. His love is my resting place.
I invite you to stand. Uh, we have a sung benediction, and then I'll, I'll do a short spoken one. Let's sing the chorus of Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Go to love and serve the Lord. Amen.